and talking of Fabio Wardley, here he is. Here he is. Yes, Fabs. What's going on, boys? What are you doing? Nice what are you doing, you. man? How's it going? I'm all all right, son. I'm all all right. How's things? Yeah, good, good, man. Good, good. Thank you for joining us. No worries, man. Look how fresh he looks, he man. Does look bare He's probably fresh, been sparring he? all day. I don't know about that. Uh, I'm fucking. Oh, up. somebody Not sparked him out. That's given Fraser a bit of confidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate. So, buzzing for this fight? Are you buzzing and ting for this fight? Yeah, yeah, mate. Can't wait to get stuck in. Can't wait to get stuck in. I love the big occasions, love the big events. So, it's, it's going to be a mad one. We're going to be there. Oh, you yeah, along, we're going to yeah? be there 100%. in our Fraser Clark t-shirts. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a fucking banging so, card, isn't it, uh, as well? Marku, Congo. Yeah, 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 I did. I did, I did. It's, I made a point and I said, like, look, we need to put on a, a big card as well because, like, we can't... I'm doing all right, but I can't fucking carry the show all on my own. So we need to put some decent names on there. But fair play to them and Boxer and that. They have um, they've done well. They have done very well. They have done very well. So... We won't go into detail about your past, but come on, from recruitment to here, did you ever see this mad thing happening? Uh, nah, not like this at least, anyways. Not not to this extent and not to this level, I don't think. Um, I've said before, like, I, I always thought, like, I'd just have, like, maybe 15, 20 pro fights, but they'd all be on, like, small hall shows, your court, whatever, and then maybe I'd fight for, like, a southern area, an English on like the undercard of an O2 show at like right at the end of my career and that was my big finish and I'd have been really happy with that at that point. That'd have been great. And then mad that the O2 is the venue I fought at the most now and I'm headlining it. So it's um life comes at you fast. It's funny. Know, it's funny how man. things go. Fair play to you. Go on, John. I was gonna say, yeah, so you had four white collar fights, is that correct? Yeah, just the four. It's outrageous. So uh, the first time I see you fight, I think it was against Williams. I think it was about your Phil fourth, Williams. Phil Williams. Phil Williams. And I remember I was doing a channel with uh, with Kyra. We see you fight, and I didn't want to get too high straight away because of the background. But I was like looking at the way you moved around the ring, just the confidence, the way you was throwing your punches, the movement. But it's almost like you couldn't go. Oh, this is one guy to watch because of the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How have you? dealt with that like the, I suppose the imposter syndrome is what they call it the, yeah. am I good enough have I got all this amateur background how have you dealt with that and in terms of your learning because even now like after Nathan Gorman Adelaide I can see massive improvements even, like even from then mm. so how are you dealing with the the naysayers not having the amateur background yeah yeah all of it it's all rolled into just one big package like it's almost a bit of a get out of jail free card, my background, because I'm not expected to do well or do anything. So then when I do, it's like, oh, okay, fucking hell, like, he's, he's done something all right. So it's a bit like that, it gives, at least with the early stage of my career, it gave me the freedom to be like, well, everyone's expecting me to trip up and, and mess this up anyway. So as long as I just keep going and doing my thing, at least I can have fun with it and, and get through it. But. My thing was all, I knew that I started on such a back foot compared to obviously these amateurs and these ABAs and whatever. So I just did hunt sparring anywhere, everywhere it was. I'd just go wherever I could go. Whoever needed me, whenever they needed me, I'd find a way to be there because that experience was invaluable. Um, and it slowly built me as a, as a fighter and helped me progress and helped me get better. And I got away probably with my, my maybe first... <laughs> 10 fights off probably pure kind of athleticism and just having a bit of speed and having a bit of power and then it started to get to the point where I was like right I really need to focus on this actual boxing thing um and really kind of get to the nitty-gritty of the details and stuff which I'd always loved I'd just not always been able to implement them in the ring on the night and stuff but then obviously further down the line adding Ben to the team things like that you can see the massive shift in my um my style and just the, kind of my presence in the ring versus pre Ben and post Ben. Um, they're obviously the main obvious ones were Nathan Gorman and, and and Adelaide from those performances. Yeah, you look so different in the Adelaide fight to the Gorman fight. The Gorman fight was a little bit messy. We were at that, weren't we, Johnny B? We were there as yeah. well, cheering you on yeah. for that one. Maybe uh, Nathan Gorman tops on as well. Yeah, <laughs> Nathan Gorman tops on. Yeah, I'd be blind if it was. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, you was much more clean cut in the Adelaide fight, and um, 
I mean, you didn't look in any jeopardy at any point in that fight. Nah, I felt comfortable. Felt yeah. really comfortable all the way through. It looked that way. Don't he speak well, John? Do you know what I mean? If he, if he offered me a job right now through his old recruitment, I reckon I'd go to the <laughs> fucking interview. You know that. <laughs> you know, about speaking well, I would. We, we've like we spoke about you a lot uh, on this podcast. But I would say you have nailed it in terms of the Goldilocks conditions of you seem to be respectful in a build-up, but you're not respectful. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's like if a posh guy goes and like, not saying, but if, if I go and order something, I have to really add an extra, oh, please and thank you, because my accent just make, maybe set, makes me sound rude. But the way you like the trash talking with Adelaide, but it's not like trash talking, even like with Fraser Clark. You're saying stuff to him. I mean, that's a bit disrespectful, but it doesn't even sound like it is disrespectful. <laughs> uh, it's a fine balance, isn't it? It's a fine balance. Well, you're doing it right. Both. Just a little. I like to poke and prod and just look. I'm not here to get get personal or get too serious, or because everyone's here to work and do their job and earn some money and whatever else. I get it, but also look. If I can poke the bear every now and then, I, I'm going to have yeah. some fun with it. The Adelaide build-up was so fucking good. It was so yeah, brilliant, mental. honestly. Um, and listen, I know you beat Adelaide, but I think you need a rematch with his mate because I think that was a TKO at the press conference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of people have said that, to be fair. A lot of people have said yeah, that. Yeah, call him so. out. Call him out after this fight. Um, okay. I've got a question for you. I've always wanted to ask you this. Mm. Did you hit Larty clean? <laughs> <laughs> I hit him. I don't know if I hit him that hard, yeah. but I, I definitely, I look, I definitely hit him, and I, I hit him relatively clean. But I'm no AJ. Uh, at least I wasn't at that point in my I, career. Yeah, anyway. I know. I mean, you threw a so, good punch. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. He was. Uh, <laughs> he, he was a. He was a late notice opponent. We had a dropout and stuff, and he was game and came and, and whatever else. But who? Who knows? It took knows? about four hours to get to the ring, didn't he? That's the bit. That's that's the bit that pissed me off the most. Yeah, I bet. Because I was fuming. Because the thing is, as well, I'm so he goes first, and when he's there, I'm behind the screen, but at the bottom of the ramp. <laughs> so I'm I'm watching him walk, falling and asleep. I'm stood there just going, "Mate, can you hurry up? Like, what are we uh, doing yeah. here?" Yeah. Oh, that was you could, mad. You should have just come out behind him and start shooting. Should have walked past him. Just fucking bullet past him. Yeah, I don't care. A side, B side. I'll go to the ring. Come on, crack on. Let's move. Oh, fuck yeah. you, know. Right then, come on then. Fraser Clark. Mm. What do you think of the man, first of all? What do you think of his career? His professional career? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> it's poor. It is poor. For a man of his standing, for a man of his calibre, for a man of his background, it is It is poor. He should have been on a Joe Joyce esque trajectory with those kind of fights, those kind of tests that early on. Like the same things I've I've said. He's not the youngest in terms of how he's got into at the age he's got into professional boxing. He's a bit weathered. He's been through. He's been in boxing a long time. He's got a lot of miles on the clock. So you need to crack on. You need to get some things done and. Fighting eight bin men or whatever he's done so far, and or I wouldn't call Wack a bin man, but he's a tall bin man, whichever. <laughs> but having eight easy, comfortable fights when you're an Olympic bronze medalist doesn't make any sense. Even my first eight fights were tougher than that. Like I d- it doesn't even make any sense. So it does yeah, make a bit of sense. Shall I tell you what the sense is? Well, it's over there at Boxer. Like they like to do things different over there at Boxer from what I am gathering so far since Ben has been there. But you might not want to comment on that since you're doing a fight with Ben at the moment. I think look, don't get me wrong, they know that it's very obvious they're protecting their investment. Um and that's obvious from the first bid situation the first time around as well. And it's been obvious in other scenarios and other situations they've had with other fighters. They're very they don't want to risk certain people, but Ultimately, if they're not good enough, they're not good enough. So why are you wasting your time trying to drag them out mm. where you can find that out sooner rather than later? If they are, great. If they're not, okay, move on. Go find the next one. Put your put your money, put your back in, put your promotion behind the right people who are actually of value instead of kind of m- milking a dead cow that's not really getting anything for you. Mm. Do, is, do you res- I was just going to say, it's you- such an excellent fight, just purely because of what you said a minute ago, as in he's got a massive amateur background, you've got none. You've had quite an exceptional pro career thus far, and he's had not much of a pro career so far. So there's a heavy balance there, isn't there? Um, yeah, he fought, he fought Jalilov, didn't he? He fought Joyce. 
Um, he fought them all in the he's, amateurs. That's what um, I mean. In the amateurs, he's done it. He, can't, he He's shown over there he's done it and can do it. I'm not, again, I'm not a... Um, I'm not an amateur wizard, so I don't know how he got on in necessarily in those fights and things like that. But at least he's been in those competitions and he's been competing at that level for a while. So I don't know why they why they've wrapped him in 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 bubble wrap so much with with the fights in the pro game, like get him because it, all it does as well is devalue him and, and it affects his status within boxing. Because we can always see when like when someone's against a nobody opponent. We're not dumb. We can we know what they're there for. So all it does is drop his stock as a fighter, and he has to keep coming out and battling for himself and going, no, 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 I'm I am good. I, I want this. I mm. want that. Ah, well, show it then. Because yeah, Joe Joyce, he moved quite fast, didn't he? Um, mm. I'll say this. So I watched the um, the promo the other day, and in the promo, he said he had a bigger heart than you. Right. So this is my question to you. I heard Ngannou the other day. When he was talking about Tyson Fury, he said he found that spot and it made Tyson Fury uncomfortable. And he goes, just a matter of time before he finds a spot against AJ. So my question to you is this. How long before before you find that spot to make Fraser Clark uncomfortable? And do you see this fight go into the trenches? Yeah, I think so. Look, I'm not going to entirely take away from the fact that he has been through some, some tough tests in the amateurs and he's... He's well scored, well drilled, and he's been through probably like a lot of hard spars with the likes of AJ and Joyce and stuff as well. So I don't doubt he's got heart in him. Um, I just believe I've got more. And I think in the pro game, I think the night itself and the pressure on him and him knowing that he sits in that changing room beforehand, and this is the definition of make or break. Like, if you don't beat me, where do you go with your career? What do, what? Everyone everyone will just push you. You fought eight bin men and you couldn't beat this little white collar geezer who just woke up and decided to box one day. Like, what's, what, what are you doing here? What's your, where's your place in the sport, I think? So all of that pressure versus me in front of him, not a care in the world. I'm not necessarily supposed to be here. The weight's off my shoulders. Like, if I lose, everyone just goes, oh, I see. The, the white collar geezer reached his level. Like, it's no problem for me. I'm happy to get stuck in and go through the wars with it. So... For me, it will go to that place, and I just think I will come through on top. Not easily, but I think I'll be able to to really bite down through him, and he'll be surprised about what's in front of him, and a bit of his brain will just be like, you know what, fuck this. Yeah, boy, he's fucking sold it to me. Oh, I'm fucking buzzing do you, for do it. Do you think as well, as as he's, as you're saying that, Fabio, I'm picturing it, but do you do you... Do you think that as you're going through that moment and you're biting down on the gum shell, does the occasion, all of those people that you've had that test in the pro game, right, in, in front of the big fans where he hasn't really, right, you know, headlining in front of all the fans, does that come into it when you're biting down on your gum shield? Yeah, massively, massively. Because I've, again, it's a it's a gift and a curse that I've been, I've done all of my learning in the pros. I've made the mistake before of, when the crowd jeers up and diving into a situation that's got me cracked or I've, I've gone ahead of myself just because I'm playing to the crowd. And I've had it in other situations where the crowd has been useful for me to be like, yeah, come on, let's go, let's get stuck in. So trying to manage that properly on such a big occasion for him, I think will be difficult. Love it, man. Right, just a couple more questions, Fabs. We won't keep you too long, bruv, but um, come on in. Tell us how this fight goes. Do you knock him out? Because I'm asking that because um, he's got quite a big head, hasn't he? <laughs> uh, he has, but to be honest, I'm not even... I can't glass houses, stones and all that. I can't really talk too much. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I've got a pee head. <laughs> um, yeah, no, definitely. Look, I've, I've stopped all my other opponents. I'll stop him all the same. Um, I do think, don't get me wrong, I, I'm not going to take away from his... His boxing ability, it will take some doing, it will take some working out, it will take some figuring out some sticky situations and stuff, but I just believe that I come through. I just believe that I can press and bite down. And I am I believe that I'm more comfortable in that place, that I like. I, like, I, I borderline like to be there. I want to be there. I want the fight to be there. It gives me more like satisfaction afterwards when you know you, really, like, you feel like you've really earned the win. So I think, yeah, look, there's going to be a few sticky moments in that fight, but I'm going to come through and towards the second half of the fight, he'll he'll be gone. Go on, John. Anything? I was going to say that 
bite down on your gum shield. Where does that come from? Is that come just as you started boxing or is there when you was younger at school did you get bullied was you the bully or like where does that come from have you had that in your life so far see the thing is i'm nice as pie like i wasn't a bully i was never bullied i just i've just i think i've just got a bit of a screw loose somewhere like i like i love the like the come on then let's go let's see let's see let's put you versus me and let's see who comes out on top, because I bet you'll be me. And I don't, and I've, there's something in me that loves to put myself on the edge, like on the brink of, I don't know what the right word in for it is, but I just like to be in that high intense, high pressure situation. And the like, the nod, just the nod of like, come on, like, let's, you, me versus you, let's go and we'll yeah. see. And it just, it does something to me that pulls something out of me. And I'm like, you're not going to get the better of me. I don't care what it takes. I don't care what I have to do. How much I have to fight through, I will get through this. Yeah. My all-time like favourite fighter I've... is Golovkin because uh, he used to do that, didn't he? Golovkin, yeah, when he used to hit in the face, he'd go, come on. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking well, mania. Nathan Gorman did that to you. <laughs> yeah. work that out, didn't work out, did it? Well. it depends. You've got to be careful yeah. with that sometimes. Yeah, we yeah. threw our t-shirts in the bin when we left. Fuck if you yeah. remember. <laughs> right inside then. That, inside that. Inside To finish off, Fab. So we've got a little game to finish off with. The quick fire game. You've got to answer these as quick as possible. So here we go. Ready? Come on then. Bring it. All right. Don't start all that. You Come on. Come that on. Part, all right? <laughs> it told you he likes being put in the zone, <laughs> no, mate. Yeah. You know what I mean? You better well, get here up we go. Here. This is going to test it out. So, right. Let's go. Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali. Oh, Ali. Left hook, right cross. Left hook. Eddie or Frank? Eddie. Ben or Eddie? Eddie. <laughs> you had to think about that one. AJ and Garnu. AJ. Parker Zhang. Parker. Oh. Would you rather fight 10 duck sized Fraser Clarks or one Fraser Clark sized <laughs> duck? I love these questions. <laughs> Wait, what was it? 10? Would you rather fight 10 duck sized Fraser Clarks or one Fraser Clark sized duck? One Fraser Clark size duck. Would you rather be stuck in a lift with Fraser Clark or David Adelaide? Fraser Clark. AJ Fury. AJ. Ooh. And Garnu Wilder. And Garnu. Wicked. There we are. I ask one. Go I've on. got one. Go I know on. you're an Ipswich fan. Uh, so, good. Ipswich are doing quite well at the moment. Would you? Sacrifice no. this fight with. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a you semi. Said quick. It was quick. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to give you a nah, semi cool. out Sorry, here. No, no. Right, no. Right. I'm going to give you a semi out here, right? So the fight with Fraser Clark, you get yeah. a draw, but mm-hmm. it's an entertaining fight. Yeah. And then Ipswich get promoted to the Premiership. Do you take the draw, or Ipswich they stay in the Championship and then you win against Clark? No, I'll take the draw. I don't mind going again. Because then, oh, yes. then, then, look, see, I'm smart. <laughs> rematch. It's time going to the Prem. Then we do Ipswich Town. It's a big rematch. Makes sense. Love it. Days. Love it. Fab, you've been wonderful, man. Um, thank you Pleasure, so much boys. for joining us. And uh, we love you. Best of luck against Fraser Clark. And uh, we shall be there. We shall be uh, impartial on that fight. But uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, <laughs> see after say a few as beers. Well, to keep doing what you're doing, honestly, like we. If you look at our other podcast, we've all spoke highly of you on here. So I ain't just saying it because you're here, but love nothing more than a fighter that just comes to fight. Yeah. White stand, throws when, you know, the other opponent is throwing. Obviously, there's other tactical stuff going on. Your, your movement is speeding that, but f- fan favourite. So win or lose, however your career goes, just keep doing what you're doing, man, because everyone's going to pay to watch you. And even like with the trash talking, you've somehow nailed it without being too like braggadocious. You seem to be respectful but digging people out at the same time so I don't know how you're doing it but yeah uh, just no, we go really last one that, guys. I really didn't ask you um, Fury yeah. Usyk who wins? Usyk uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. fucking agree, I agree. It's, hard. It's, hard. I, I, it's probably the hardest one of the lot for me it really is yeah. but at the moment I think Usyk no, I've got last one sorry it's like if you like beat Clark mm. you are right up there I mean, mm. you possibly, Jared Anderson, I think he's eight. 
in the in the top ten if you can off the Ring magazine. But you possibly could jump into the top ten. I think you're four, aren't you, in the WBO? I think you're fifteen for the WBC. Got, yeah, I've got top ten with like three of them. I'm like right, top ten, five, six, so, seven. Have you got your eye on another fight? Is there anyone else or another couple of names that you're? Th- this is who I want to fight now. Once I get rid of Clark and Garner. No, not at the moment. Um, and I know that sounds like really diplomatic. You know, we're just focus on one fight at a time. But it is a bit of that. But also, it's it's especially with the realm that I will then move into past Fraser. It's a funny place to be in. You, I have to pick a lane in terms of what governing body I want to go down to follow what belt who's available, who's winning, who's losing, and, and things like that. So, although it sounds very cliche, yeah, right at the moment, it is just the phrase of fight. I'm not really looking too far ahead at anything else. All right, one follow-up then. So, you obviously, like, <laughs> no. you obviously wanted to knock out David Adelaide, and you obviously want to knock out Fraser Clark. Is there anyone else out there you fancy just knocking out for the sake of it? For the sake of it? David Adelaide's Whoa. mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking, is there another bit of beef? Uh, There's no one I have a real problem with. It's not a, like I'm like again. As much as I poke and and prod people and have a dig and that, I'm only having a dig. Like I'm having a laugh. Like just just have a giggle with it, mate. It's just a joke. Like don't take it too hard. But there's no one really that's ever really ever like proper wound me up or or, or done me in at all. Nah, I'm, did I'm you good. not hear what Hergovic said about you? I know Ergovic pretty well. I spent a month of him in Miami sparring, so he's oh, right. I picked the wrong geese and ended yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> no, fucking brilliant. Thank you, Fabs. And uh, yeah, best of luck, mate. And uh, we shall be watching throughout your career because we're huge fans. So, uh, top man, thank you for joining us. Down there, boys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers, mate. All the best. Take care.